Good morning, everyone. I just, again, want to thank the organizers for an opportunity to speak here um, th this, uh, this morning. And I also want to thank you all for sticking it out to the final session of, of this wonderful meeting. So I'm actually going to be speaking today about um, a, 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 the preclinical data supporting a, a potential clinical trial with um, a FAC inhibitor, which you've heard several times um, during the course of the meeting, 6063 or defactinib, and a combination with 5584, which is a PI3K inhibitor. Um, so in terms of disclosures, uh, I am an employee of Veristem. Um, I have not been on safari. I have not climbed Table Mountain. And therefore, there'll be no wildlife photos at, uh, during the course of this study. But not yet. <laughs> so, you know, why, why consider a combination of a, of a FAC inhibitor and a PI3K inhibitor? Um, it was interesting. During the immunotherapy talks early on, uh, I think it was um, the first day of the, the meeting, somebody sort of raised the, the or made the comment that it's, it's very easy to underestimate the complexity of the immune system and I think when we consider the kinase pathways, I think that's, that's, it's very simple to do the same thing. You know, these aren't linear pathways. There is very much crosstalk and redundancy built into the, into the cancer uh, cells. So when we're thinking about, um, you know, a combination, it does make sense if you can hit a pathway in more than one node during that pathway. And in, in the case of FAC and PI3K, FAC is able to complex and bind to um, PI3K and activate the, the, the AKT pathway. So again, when you think from a rational uh, perspective, if you block both FAC and PI3K, you may have a more durable response. The other thing is, is that FAC has some very distinct, um, you know, sort of parallel um, biological activities, uh, which are important for uh, cancer. And, you know, so the thought is if you can block these other sort of pathways and biological responses that you may again have, you know, block proliferation through AKT inhibition. You can inhibit cell, mo uh, cell mo mobility. You can affect um, metastases with the combination. So again, I think, you know, blocking this network versus a single node may be important. And I actually think it's been the Achilles heels of many very targeted agents that is that there is this feedback mechanism and crosstalk that sort of probably, you know, you see resistance develop re re relatively rapidly and probably limits the utility. So besides this sort of inhibition of a network of pathways, uh, you know, other data to support this combination is we have done a number of preclinical models, which I'll show you some data from, that show synergy between 6063 and 5584, which is a, the PI3K inhibitor. Um, both these agents effectively target cancer stem cells, which from Veristem's perspective is, is uh, you know, of interest. And again, both these drugs independently have shown activity in uh, mesothelioma patients. So in terms of the drugs, uh, again, you've heard a lot about defactinib, which is the focal adhesion kinase inhibitor. Uh, we believe FAC is a critical pathway um, in cancer stem cells and the disease progression, particularly around cell mobility and proliferation, and importantly, tumor initiation from a cancer stem cell perspective. Uh, 6063 is an oral compound, and importantly, it has a, a safety profile that is suitable for long-term dosing and combining with not only chemotherapy, but other targeted agents. Uh, it has been shown to preferentially uh, target cancer stem cells. Again, you can sort of see on this graph, here is the bulk, you know, effect against bulk tumor. However, when you look at cancer stem cells, this drug is um, preferentially targeting those, those cells. This, uh, the drug is, is under, in, under investigation clinically um, in a number of, of studies, including the COMMAND study in, in mesothelioma, which has been mentioned several times. The other molecule, which is uh, 5584, uh, which is a dual TORC1, TORC2 pan PI3K inhibitor, um, you can see here when you look at the IC50s across the different isoforms of, of PI3K and mTOR, it has a, ve a very balanced um, uh, profile, which is different to a number of the other PI3K inhibitors out there that are very much either isoform specific or don't impact uh, talk one, talk two. And from the uh, 
when, when thinking about cancer stem cells, Veristem has shown that if you, the, the TORC 1, 2 uh, inhibition is critical for its effect on cancer stem cells, a pure PAN I3, a PI3K inhibitor will not have effect against cancer stem cells. And interestingly, I think it was, uh, it was an interesting talk yesterday by, I think it was Dario Barbone, who showed that with the GDC0980, which is the Genetec PI3K inhibitor, which has a similar sort of dual TORC1, TORC2, PAN PI3K inhibitor, that if you take away the TORC1 uh, side of the, the drug, you actually do not see an effect in this 3D spheroid cultures um, in mesothelioma. So again, it seems like this profile is very suitable for, for uh, you know, investigation in um, mesothelioma. And again, this is, a, is an agent, as you can see here, it does have activity against the bulk tumor, which is sort of see the non-cancer stem cells seen in red, but there is, again, a preferential sensitivity to cancer stem cells. So speaking of cancer stem cells, you know, 6063, the FAC inhibitor, uh, it does target cancer stem cells. This is just sort of data here showing that if you take mesothelioma cells and then you treat them with either a control, pemetrexid, 6063 or a combination of 6063 and pemetrexid. Uh, if you then take those cells and look at the, those cells' ability to establish a new tumor in, 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 a, in a mouse, which is really the hallmark of a cancer stem cell, the ability to form a new tumor, what you see is if you take the control cell, cells injected into animals, all animals within a relatively short period of time develop tumors. If you use pemetrexid, uh, in, in these mesothelioma cell lines, you do see a, a prolongation before the, the, the animals develop the tumors. However, all animals develop tumors. If you look at 6063 treated cells, no animal develops a tumor uh, following treatment. And again, when you take the combination, once again, you do not see uh, any, any animals developing tumors. So that's treating cells, you know, what can we do in vivo? Uh, so the, in this study, this is a, an orthotopic um, mesothelioma model. So the, this, this, the tumor is grown in the, in the lungs of the animal. And then the animal is administered 6063. And as you can see from the slides, you, uh, you can see a marked decrease in the number of cancer stem cells in those animals after a relatively sh short period of treatment of about two weeks. In terms of 5584, again, you know, it's, it's, it does target cancer stem cells. And in this model, it's a slightly different model, and this is a, a small cell lung cancer model. Uh, in this model, what happens is the tumor is, the, the cells are inoculated into an animal. The, the, uh, the animal is then treated. The, at the end of the treatment period, the tumor is taken out of the animal. The cells are dissociated and then sorted with flow and we can look at sort of cancer stem cell assays and also the ability of doing some uh, reimplantation into secondary animals. So again, if you look at the graph on the left, you can see here, this is, this is the, um, after I think it's two weeks of, three weeks of treatment, you can see that 5584 did have the ability to inhibit the proliferation of the tumor in these animals. However, if we then take those tumors out and look at the cancer stem cell population in those tumors, you can again see in the, sorry, in the uh, middle panel here, you can see again, you see a marked decrease in the, in the number of cancer stem cells. But what's really very striking is if you then take these cells and reimplant them into a secondary animal with no further treatment of the animal, what you see is that the ability of the, the cells to initiate a new tumor is significantly inhibited with um, uh, cells that have been treated, or animals that have been treated with 5584. So when you look at the combination of these two against cancer stem cells, you can see here uh, in this mesothelioma cell line that, you know, if you look at the blue and the sort of um, red bar, you can see that both agents individually have, you know, a dose-dependent effect on cancer stem cells. And again, when you combine them, you can really see an additive effect of, of these agents against cancer stem cells. And again, you know, for those in the audience who haven't seen some of the earlier talks, this is very this effect on cancer stem cells is very different to what you see with chemotherapy. And this was some very nice data presented by Paul Bass yesterday, which shows that when you look at pre- and post-treatment um, biopsies from patients who have been treated with pemetrexid and cisplatin, what you see is a marked increase in the number of, of aldoflor-positive cells or cancer stem cells. 
and this correlates also with an increase in cancer stem cell markers in these patients. So this is a, you see an, an upregulation or an increase in the number of cancer stem cells in, the, in this setting. For those who are more purists, if you look at the sort of synergistic um, analysis of the, of the combination in cell lines, in, in, in multiple cell lines that we've looked at using different methods of determining synergy using such uh, the, the, the combination index analysis or the highest single agent analysis, we consistently see a synergy uh, between the two in these cell lines. In terms of in vivo activity of the combination, so this is some work that's been done at Joe, uh, uh, Joe Tester's lab at Fox Chase Cancer Center. And in this study, this is an, again an orthotopic, so what happens is the cells are uh, injected into the tail vein of the, of the animal. The cells are then sort of um, reside in the, in, the, in the lungs of these animals. And we basically wait 11 days before we start treating with either the, the single you know, agent FAC inhibitor and PO3K or the combination of the two. And what you can see in this particular slide is, you know, as expected with the control animals, you see uh, you know, a, a large you know, um, tumor volume in the, in the lungs of these animals. Both 6063 and 5584 as individual agents had significant activity against the um, in, in, in inhibiting the tumor burden in these animals. But what's striking is when you see the combination, you definitely see uh, a substantial uh, effect on the, on the tumor burden. And in fact, two of the 10 animals in the study had no evidence of, of tumor in the lungs um, after, after the treatment period, uh, for which is only two weeks. So you know, this, is, this is very interesting. So in terms of you know, clinical activity, what's been shown with uh, the FAC inhibitor in mesothelioma, as you know, we have this large uh, randomized phase two ongoing. Um, but uh, again, Rafael Bueno yesterday had a very nice talk showing some, some intriguing data in, in a window study that's been done at the Brigham in which the, the drug was administered for 12 days with pre and post treatment biopsies in patients uh, undergoing go, going to surgery. And in this study, uh, again, early data, but what we saw is a, 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 an interesting uh, effect on the cancer stem cell markers in these biopsies pre and post. But uh, you know, provocatively, we also saw some potential changes in the tumor volume of these um, tumors, again, with only a very short 12 days uh, worth of treatment. So again, stay tuned uh, as this study develops, but it's definitely uh, interesting. Uh, you all probably have heard uh, uh, much about the PI3K um, mTOR uh, GDC0980, which is the Genetech compound, which did undergo a phase one study in mesothelioma. And in this study, uh, there were four PRs shown amongst 33 mesothelioma patients treated in the study. And, uh, you know, again, this is, is quite uh, you know, provocative. And if you look at the profile of the drugs seen here, the Veristem drug has a very similar profile to the Genetech compound, if not slightly more potent. So with the, the, this sort of rational combination, the preclinical data that we've seen and the individual clinical activity that's been seen uh, with both these agents, we, we are now in the process of initiating a phase one study of 5584 administered with a fixed dose of 6063 in subjects with relapsed malignant mesothelioma, and this will be both uh, peritoneal and pleural mesothelioma. The primary objective will be to determine the MTD and recommended phase two dose and schedule for 5584 and the, in the combination going forward. We'll also be looking at the safety and tolerability of the combination. Um, exploratory objectives will also, we'll be looking at, of course, the anti-tumor response rate of the combination and um, you know, to look at pharmacodynamic effects and then to identify if there's any tumor genetic alterations that may correlate with sensitivity to the combination. So in summary, 6063 or defactinib is a potent selective FAC kinase inhibitor. 5584 is uh, you know, inhibitor of PI3K and mTOR. Both agents preferentially target cancer stem cells and reduce bulk tumor growth in preclinical uh, mesothelioma models. There is synergistic activity between the, the, co the combination with the combination, and this data support a planned phase one combination study in uh, patients with malignant uh, mesothelioma. 
And with that, I just want to uh, thank the, 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 you know, the Veristem research team who's generated a lot of the preclinical data, as well as the, the folks at Fox Chase Cancer Center and Joe Tester's lab who's done some of the uh, in vivo animal models, and of course the clinical investigators who are participating in the, in the phase one study. So with that, thank you. Thank you.